Welcome back everyone to Wiener Worldwide. I'm Frank Furter and today we're bringing you the Sonoran hot dog. This hot dog originated in northern Mexico. It's bacon wrapped, pan fried, topped with pinto beans, onions, tomatoes, mustard, mayonnaise, and a jalapeno salsa. This spicy dog is coming your way next and without further ado, let's get down to the kitchen and make the Sonoran dog. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is prep some ingredients. I got one onion and one tomato here. I'm just gonna finally chop this tomato into bite-sized pieces. You can chop the tomato up however you like. I like mine a little bit thinner, but if you like chunky, go chunky. I'm also gonna chop up one onion. I'm gonna cut half of it into strips for sauteing and dice up the rest to use for topping and for the salsa. All right, that's everything we need to chop for today. Now we're gonna make a simple Mexican crema by combining a half a cup of mayonnaise and a couple tablespoons of milk. Just put those ingredients into a small bowl and then begin mixing. We're looking for something that's not too thick but not too thin either, something that we can easily put into a squirt bottle. Put in a couple more tablespoons of milk if you think it's a little bit too thick, and then keep mixing until you've reached the desired thickness. It should look something like this. Alright, now let's get to making our jalapeno salsa. I got in front of me four homegrown jalapeno peppers. I also got that half a tomato I didn't use earlier, and a little bit of chopped onion. We're going to need to boil some things first, so let's take this action over to the stovetop. Put your jalapenos in a small saucepan and cover it with just enough water to cover all the peppers. Bring it to a medium boil and let it sit there for about 6 to 7 minutes until you start to see little blisters all across the skin of the jalapeno. In total, these should sit for about 10 to 15 minutes until they're nice and soft in the middle. Once that's done, grab a spider and fish them out into a small bowl and let them cool off. Don't turn the heat off on the saucepan yet because we want to keep that water boiling for our tomato. So once you're done fishing those out, we're going to grab our half a tomato that we had earlier and we're going to throw it into that boiling water as well. The tomato won't take as long as the jalapenos because the jalapenos have thicker skin. So the tomato is only going to sit in there for about 3-4 to four minutes until you start to see the skin peel back. So fish that guy out once that's done and head back to our cutting board so we can start assembling the salsa. Once everything's cooled down we want to take the skin off the jalapenos and the same for the tomato. And we're going to throw that guy into a blender along with our chopped onion and a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. Here you can also add a little bit of cilantro or any Mexican spices you like but I'm going to keep things simple. Also don't be like me and forget to de-seed your jalapenos because you're going to get something really spicy. Unless you really want something spicy but I wouldn't recommend it. Alright, once we finish making our fiery death salsa, let's go on to making some pinto beans. I'm dropping in about two slices of chopped bacon into a cold saucepan, and then we're turning the heat onto medium, and we're going to cook until the rendered fat has produced a nice crispy bacon. Once your bacon is nice and crispy, I'm going to dump in one can of pinto beans, and then begin to deglaze the bottom of the saucepan. This is why I like using the cold pan technique when cooking my bacon, because we get a nice fond at the bottom that we can deglaze with a liquid, in this case the pinto bean juice. Once that's been deglazed, add in a couple teaspoons of cumin, a couple teaspoons of cayenne pepper, and a little bit of garlic powder, and then give that another nice stirring. Once everything's nice and mixed, bring that to a low simmer and set it off to the side until it's time to assemble our dog. Speaking about our dog, how about we make our dog? I'm going to add in about a tablespoon of olive oil into a medium skillet, and I'm going to drop in my onion. This is just a simple caramelization, so these are going to cook for about 3-4 to four minutes. Make sure to stir your onions around, or give them a nice toss to coat them all in that olive oil, and then just let them sit until they've been nice and caramelized. After about 3 minutes, my onions have been nice and caramelized. Give them one more toss in all that olive oil, and then set them aside so that we can top our dog with them later. I mentioned earlier that I'm making a bacon wrap dog. I actually covered bacon wrap dogs a couple weeks ago when I made the Texas Tommy. You can check out that video to see my technique on to wrap this dog, but it's pretty simple. Just grab a piece of bacon, wrap it around, and put some toothpicks on it to hold it all together. Let's talk a little bit about the history of the Sonoran dog while this guy cooks. The Sonoran dog was invented sometime in the late 1980s in the city of Hermosillo, Mexico, which is the capital of the state of Sonora. Eventually, these dogs made their way to Tucson and Phoenix, Arizona, where they have now become a staple of Southern Arizona cuisine. There is no set origin for how these dogs came to be, but they most likely started because of street vendors trying to outdo their rivals. Bacon-wrapped hot dogs are a classic in Mexico, where they are known as danger dogs because of how cheap they are and because they're often sold by unlicensed street vendors. I know if I find myself in southern Arizona, you bet I'm going to be eating these dogs all day long. Now let's go check on our dog and finally finish making our Sonoran. 
All right, coming back to our dog about three minutes later, and it's time to give our dog a flip. So we're gonna give that guy a flip and cook it for another additional two to three minutes on that side. To get nice color on the entire hot dog, you can actually remove the toothpicks at this point because the bacon should be pretty well binded to the hot dog at this point. So after about another two to three minutes, my dog is all the way cooked through and I'm gonna take it out and let it drip dry on some paper towels. Now that our dog is done, let's go over and finally assemble the Sonoran. Once your dog is cold, gather all your ingredients and begin assembly. I got here a Belilo style roll that I found at my local market. These are the same style rolls that they use to make the Sonoran dogs in Arizona. So first put our dog in, top it with our pinto beans, some caramelized onions, our diced onion, our chopped tomato, our super spicy jalapeno salsa, a little bit of yellow mustard, and of course our Mexican crema. I probably could have done a better job getting my ingredients inside of the bun a little more, but I'm not complaining. This guy's still gonna be delicious and I can't wait to eat it. At long last, I can finally eat my very first Sonoran dog. Alright guys, that's gonna do it for another episode of Wiener Worldwide. Today, we made the Sonoran dog. If you enjoyed this video and you enjoy the history about the Sonoran dog, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment any suggestions you have for future episodes. Thank you for all your support, and until next time, enjoy. That's easily one of the best hot dogs I've ever had.